Grief and the other feelings that come after the loss of someone important to us can be so hard to navigate, but journaling can be really useful to help us. We're going to have a look at 20 ideas for what you can include through your grief journaling, with layouts targeted towards processing feelings and just taking care of ourselves throughout the grieving process. Notably in this video, we're talking about a topic that can be hard for a lot of people. If you're going through grief at the moment, or are supporting someone who is, just know that my thoughts are with you. Please do make sure you're taking care of yourself, and if you need further support, I do encourage you to seek it out. It's okay not to be okay, and it is okay to ask for help. At the end, we'll also look at a less hypothetical layout, so you can see how this might look in practice. But getting into our ideas, and the first one is long-form journaling. It probably goes without saying, but we know that journaling can really help us process thoughts and feelings. So in a time where those feelings are really heightened, we might even have a bit of confusion around how we're feeling or maybe how we're supposed to feel, journaling those thoughts out could be really useful. There is no right way to do this. You can really tackle your long-form journaling however you want to. There's no word limit limit for this, you don't have a minimum requirement to meet, but sometimes it can be a little bit hard to know what to journal about. There are good journaling prompts online when it comes to navigating the feelings associated with grief, but this could be writing about memories, explaining your feelings, thinking about the things you wish you could say or share with this person. It doesn't have to be chronological, it doesn't have to have perfect spelling or grammar, and you don't actually even have to keep it after the fact. If you end up putting it in your journal and you don't really want to look at it in your day-to-day -day life, you can just stick a piece of paper over the top or you can secure the pages together just with some washi tape, putting it along the edge so that then that page isn't easily turned toable. Our second idea is very much related to this, and that's doing a brain dump or a mind unwind. The reality is that life doesn't really stop just because somebody isn't there anymore, and having to deal with all of those things along with the new feelings that we've been presented can be a challenge. Giving yourself some distance from those things though, getting them out of your head and onto paper, means that they're safely captured somewhere, so that you can spend more of your mental energy trying to navigate your feelings. Your mind unwind could be done on paper like this, or you could just type it out, whichever way is faster and easier for you, but this can just be a list of your thoughts, feelings, notes, reminders, anything that you have in your head that you just want to get out so that you can process other things. Another element that we can include through our grief journaling are quotes and affirmations. This could be things that they said themselves or things that remind you of them, or it could be words of comfort that remind you that this this too shall pass. You could either set this up as a dedicated page in your journal, or you could do it in amongst the other items we talk about. The next idea we have though is an in memoriam page, where you put in things like a photo of them, maybe a photo of the two of you together, their name, age, birthday, any little bits and pieces of information that you want to remember. You could include quotes like we talked about before, memories, journaling, anything that you want to capture to remember about that person. Throughout the pages, the pictures that I've used are of people that I've known and lost. So this one is a picture of my nan and I as a baby having a nap. What can be one of the hardest things about losing someone is thinking about all of the what ifs or should haves or could haves, anything that you didn't get a chance to say to them or would have liked to have said more to them, or maybe things that you did or said that you didn't want to do, things that you didn't get to apologize for. If you have feelings like that about the person that you've lost, then setting up a space in your journal for the words that were left unsaid could be useful. Do remember that this is not an opportunity to beat ourselves up, that's not going to help at all, but it's more of a way to just kind of feel like the words had been said, even if we didn't actually get a chance to do it. You could write this in the form of a letter or in some kind of correspondence that fits with the person that we're talking about. And it's also good to note that this type of idea and a couple of the other ones in this video don't just have to be about people who have passed. Sometimes there are conversations that we haven't had a chance to say to someone, either because they wouldn't respond in a receptive way, or maybe we just can't bring ourselves to have that conversation. So doing this activity where we write down those thoughts and feelings in a way as if we were to say it to them can be useful. Of course, of course, as said, these are all just ideas. You don't have to do all of them throughout your grief journaling, but you pick and choose for the situation that you're in. But the next idea we have is a space to write down the things that remind you of them. This could be special memories that you shared together, they could be scents, songs, movies. 
effectively anything that brings them to mind for you. This can be a nice little space in your journal to come back to when you want to feel closer to them, even if they aren't necessarily there with you anymore. Flipping over though, and our next idea is just general memory keeping. This can be about specific moments in particular, or it could be about their life as a whole. In this picture here, it's again me as a baby hanging out with my grandpa, but some of the pieces of information that you might want to record through your memory keeping are the key people, any dates, any places, what the happenings were, any feelings that you have, really anything that you feel like you might forget or you want to capture in a more physical, permanent way. Part of this memory keeping can also be related to our next idea, which is a correspondence keeper. So if you had any cards or letters, they could even be emails from this person, then capturing those can be a nice way to preserve their memory too. Especially when those things have been written by them to you, that can be quite special to hold on to. As we talked about before, long form journaling can be a really good way to process our thoughts and feelings, but it can be very hard to start with a blank page, not really knowing what to write about. If that's you, then having a space in your grief journaling to capture those prompts could be quite useful. As said, you can find a bunch of these online just by doing a Google search of grief journal prompts or prompts for journaling about negative emotions, that kind of stuff, and just collecting the ones that resonate with you, the ones that you feel might be useful, and jotting those down. That way, when you come to do your journaling, you at least have some starting points. This could be stuff about the person in particular, it could be stuff about your grieving process, but it could also be things related to finding little positivity as well. Stuff to remind you that this isn't all there is. In putting together these ideas, I didn't want them just to be related to grief specifically, but more so other things that might be useful during this time. One related to this is putting yourself together a little menu of things that you can do to take care of yourself, or what I'm calling easy mode self-care. In this one, you think about the different categories of how you can take care of yourself, on this one, I've got nutrition, hydration, leisure, and movement, and kind of the easiest versions of tackling those things. Stuff that you can do that'll feel really manageable in the moment, but it'll just help you to take care of yourself while you're dealing with your feelings. What's actually on this list is gonna look different for everyone, and it can also be useful wherever possible to kind of outsource these as well. For instance, in terms of nutrition, is there some kind of service that you could get which would provide you meals? Can you lean on your friends and family to do that? It's okay to lean on other people when we're going through hard times. Our next idea though might feel a little out of place in amongst these other ones, and that's having a space to write down things you're grateful for. It can feel very hard, almost even wrong, to be trying to find positivities in a time that's filled with so much sadness and anger and hurt. But really, that's kind of the time when it's most important. Finding these things to be grateful for isn't a way to minimize our other feelings. It's more so just a way to remember what else there is. These could be things that you're grateful for about your loved one in particular. So grateful for having known them, for the moments that you shared together. It could be grateful for the people or things or processes that have helped you through your grief. Or it could just be other little things in life that are giving you a little bit of positivity on your hard days. Essentially just another way to tell ourselves that this isn't all there is for us. Another layout idea that could be useful to include is people in your support network. Who are the people that you can rely on when you need an ear or a hand? The people who maybe you can offload some of those self-care tasks onto? The ones who are going to be there when you need them. This doesn't actually have to be set up like a contact log where you have their name and contact details, but having a list of those go-to people so that when you do need that help, you have a space to turn to. Flipping over though, and our next idea is a list of ways that you can honor the person's memory. This is effectively just like a list of stuff that you can do, either big things or smaller things, that help make you feel connected to that person still. For instance, if you know that that person had a dream or a vision that never really got fully realized, is there some way that you could make that happen? Are there any things that you guys used to enjoy together that you could now continue to enjoy to feel close to them? This will be different depending on who you are, who you've lost, and just like all of the ideas we have, you don't have to include it if it doesn't fit. The idea behind the decoration here though is that if you and this person were planning a trip or said that you always wanted to go to a particular place and never really got around to it, maybe you could still plan that trip and still go and enjoy it for the both of you. A lot of the time grief can bring up feelings of shame, guilt, and other things that just lead to a lot of negative self-talk. Often a lot of this negativity is pretty unfounded, so it could be a good idea to somewhere in your journal have a place to reframe those negative statements that you're telling yourself. I've set this one up in two columns. So we have the statement that we've been saying that is more negative and kind of just putting ourselves down, and then a space to reframe it into something else. 
This process of reframing can be quite tricky and often can be really hard to do for ourselves, so it could be useful talking to a friend or someone that you trust about it. Oftentimes when we lose somebody, it can feel like people are very accommodating or pay attention to our feelings in the time span that's immediately after the loss, but they aren't necessarily as mindful of times when those feelings of grief can kind of pop back up again because of the milestone moments or firsts that we're having without those people in our lives anymore. This is when journaling about our feelings can again help, and this idea I'm calling firsts and thoughts. These are for any of those first moments or milestone moments that you're experiencing without your loved ones present. This could be stuff like holidays, birthdays, celebrations in general, or even just little things that you guys used to do together, but now you're doing without them. In terms of stuff that you might want to write about in these moments, you could explain what happened, as if you were writing to that person, talk about how you think they would have responded or reacted or felt, possibly even explaining it to them as if they just missed out on this instance and you were trying to catch them up on the details. There is no deadline or kind of timeline to meet when it comes to grief, and there will be moments when it pops back up again. Jumping to our idea we have at the bottom here, and for this one I included a picture of my dog, Max, or Bambino Max. And the idea we have here is putting in an I'm gonna be okay list. This is effectively an evidence log that shows you that this is not the end for you, there are other things happening. Either little wins, small milestones, anything that indicates that there are still happy times ahead for you. Some of the examples I put down here were things like, I made dinner, I got a compliment, I asked for help, I started a new project. Anything that shows you that you're moving forward. Oftentimes we have a tendency to dwell on things that are more negative, things that we haven't done, progress we're not making. So having this little wins log or an evidence log can be really useful. One of the things that you might want to journal about following the loss of a loved one is any new sensitivities that you have, or any topics or things in particular that you're a bit more apprehensive about, that you maybe approach differently, now as that loss has happened. I've put an example down here, which you're more than welcome to read if you want to, but we do have a content warning for that, so keep that in mind if you're going to. Our next idea is very much related to the reframing negative self-talk that we talked about before, and this is journaling to yourself as if you were your best friend. Oftentimes we do have a tendency to speak to ourselves a lot more negatively than we would speak to others. In particular, the things that we would say to our best friend versus the things that we say to ourselves. This is an activity that you can do to help you with some of that reframing, but thinking about anything that you're guilty about, you may have some shame around, any negative self-talk or kind of self-beration. If you said these things about yourself to your best friend, how would your best friend respond? You can of course ask them if you want to, or you can just write it as if you're standing in for that person. Remember, you're going through a trying time and we do want to be kind to ourselves. Talking about giving ourselves a hand, another thing that you might want to include in your journaling is a helping and hindering space. So this could be things about your grieving process that are actually helping you and the ones that are hindering you. The things, processes, people, whatever else that feel like they're taking you in the right direction, and then any of the ones that aren't. This can be not not only a good reminder in the moment, but also for when you go through this grief process again, you can turn back to this list as a reminder of what had helped you previously. Keeping that in mind, there is also a lot to be learned about grief, or a lot that grief can teach us. So it can be useful to have a lessons learned space throughout the process too. This is something that you'll probably want to do with a little bit of removal from the initial instances of your grief process. And it could be either what you've learned about the process itself or about how you might want to approach things differently moving forward. For instance, you might want to take more photos and videos with your loved ones. You might want to say, I love you more. Whatever things you learn about yourself or others throughout this, it can be good to jot them down. While the ones we've looked at so far are really just ideas, how do we actually bring them together? Now, as said, you do not have to do all of them at once. You don't have to do all of them at all, but just picking and choosing the ones that you think are gonna be the most helpful for you, the ones that will make you feel the most connected to your loved one, to your feelings. And so I've taken some of these and I've put them into this spread here. I kept it fairly simple, so putting a little bit of decoration on the page to start because I prefer it when things are decorated. So some torn paper in the corners, some PET washi tape, and then along with the photos of Rosie, 
we just have some journaling about different things. So about Rosie as a person, about a fond memory I have, and then some longer journaling about the difficulties that I had in finding out about her passing. If you're doing something similar, you may choose to keep these things separate from each other. So having a dedicated space to remember your loved one versus a separate space to process any negative feelings or thoughts. But this is just one example of how it might look when you go to do it for yourself. While the ideas that we covered are mainly more about processing our feelings after a loss, one thing that grief can help us with is realizing how we want to approach our relationships with those who are still with us. If that's something which is important to you, then the video we have here on screen is the next one to check out. In that one, we go over 12 different layout ideas, all targeted towards strengthening our relationships with others. So click or tap on that one and I'll see you over there.